I'm Laura Ingram, and this is the Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. Thanks for joining us. Playing women for fools. That's the focus of tonight's angle. All right, Joe Biden is lacing America with misery, as far as the eye can see. Americans of all backgrounds are looking across a dismal economic landscape. The signs of despair, you see them, I see them, they're building. And the fury is growing toward President Biden. It is astounding. Now, I don't love drowning you all in numbers. I hate that. But I'm going to make an exception tonight because it's that important. 66% disapproval for Biden's handling of the economy. My question is, who are these 34% who approve of it? As for Scranton Joe's answers for the middle class, only 36% say he's helping with the middle class. That's down from uh, a whole 5% from February. And Americans see what's happening, I think. Look at this. They're getting poorer as days go on. They remember how Biden's dim-witted Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, remember when she just brushed off inflation concerns a year ago? We made a big deal of it here on The Angle. And today, we saw a historic rate hike, a desperate move with terrible consequences for hardworking Americans. As interest rate hikes mean it will be more expensive to borrow money. If you're trying to buy a home, experts say, the asking price may not be much higher than it is now. But the cost to buy that house is going to be higher um, so th because mortgage rates are going up. That means many new homeowners will not only be paying higher interest on their mortgages, but could also get less house for their money. Oh, great. And if you've built up some credit card debt over the past year? If you've got credit card debt, it's going to cost you more. If you're buying a car, it's going to cost you more uh, because the rates of the, uh, the to borrow that money to get that car is going to go up. Now, it's infuriating. And just a few years ago, you all remember this. Under Trump, economic optimism, I was looking back in November and December 2019, it was climbing. Young Americans, minorities, women of all backgrounds had record low unemployment. There's rising wages, no inflation, no new wars, cheap gas. And now well, everything's going in the wrong direction. And on top of that, everyone's being told, Oh, just lower your expectations. What can many of us do to brace for these higher interest rates that are coming? The analysts we spoke to say if you can hold off on that major purchase of a house or a car that you've been thinking about, hold that off for as long as you can. For some, they say, it's time to think outside the box regarding your living situation. Living with relatives or sharing a residence with anyone else, they say they can that can help you ride out some of these rate hikes. Yeah, you want to move back home, live with mommy and daddy, right? So naturally, this is in this entire grim environment with a midterm wipeout looming for the Democrats. They're just left to caterwaul from stage left, fear mongering and lying about the court's draft decision to overturn Roe, just like they did during COVID. Make no mistake. This is about controlling women. Far right politicians are working to restrict all family planning services denying a whole generation of women the freedom to plan for their future. Now, Nevada's Cortez Masto has no answers on New Mexico's inflation, the illegal immigration issue that's plaguing the state. But she does have talking points from Planned Parenthood. Yay. First, the issue is just return to the states. Apparently, she doesn't understand how to read a legal draft opinion. Second, uh, the congresswoman uh, or senator thinks so little of women's intelligence that she believes women can only plan pregnancies by aborting their offspring. How insulting. And another effort to change the subject came from the woman who's a heartbeat away from the presidency, yet pretends that liberation is found in stopping the heartbeats of the unborn. Those Republican leaders who are trying to weaponize the use of the law against women, will we say, how dare they? How dare they tell a woman what she can do and cannot do with her own body? How dare they try to deny women their rights and their freedoms? She just hopes the prompter doesn't go down. Well, she's just another Democrat who doesn't trust the voters to make decisions for themselves. She'd rather have nine unelected justices make those decisions. Well, until at least the ruling went the other way. Then she's left sputtering inane platitudes about 
bodily autonomy after she and her party still try to force vaccines on women who didn't want them. None of this, by the way, is principled. But she's so apoplectic about the GOP tsunami that's about to swamp them. She's even trying to convince you that the movement that resulted in 50 million babies being aborted is, wait for it, it's patriotic. If you stand for freedom, for self-determination, for the right to privacy, if you stand for these principles, stand with us. Because you see, women's issues are America's issues. Let us fight for our country and for the principles upon which it was founded. And let us fight with everything we have got. God bless you and God bless America. So now she's saying the principles on which it was founded, the country, including aborting children. No one believes that. It's not going to work. Now, back in the 70s, 80s, even into the 90s, many liberals supported abortion for sure. But now, liberalism is defined by abortion. There are no real pro-life Democrats in Congress, and good luck finding one in your friend group. Liberals in 2022 have zero hesitation about things like selling out to China, a dictatorship that brutalizes women who are Uyghurs or Christians or who just are women who want to have big families. Liberals in 2022 line up with the military-industrial complex, which wants war with Russia. Liberals in 2022 support restrictions on movement, citing climate change, which is why they love the lockdowns. Liberals in 2022 support restrictions on speech under the bogus rationale of disinformation. And those same liberals who used to be about tolerance now cite hate speech to bar people from speaking in public to be part of public life. Of course, their definition of hate speech is purposely vague. It's always changing. Suffice it to say that liberals who say things that denigrate entire groups of Americans based on political affiliation, they're never guilty of hate speech. They've evolved and changed and gone 180, liberals have, on so many issues, but not on this one. It doesn't matter how much fetal medicine has improved or imaging or the wide array of birth control that's available or the number of couples desperate to adopt. Democrats have become abortion fanatics. It's the most important issue among a handful of issues that make up their holy grail of issues. It's a dreary dark world they're creating and one where women are the ones who really end up suffering the most. The left's answer to everything is, I don't know, it's kind of summed up by more pot, more porn, more abortions, more sexual identity indoctrination in schools, more racial recriminations, more American traditions trashed, more statues smashed. Their idea of empowerment includes lovely activities like slut walks. One leftist writer in Salon recently argued that women's path to happiness means shrugging off prudence and proudly embracing promiscuity. But I think women are onto this game. And they're onto the game that the Democrats have been playing for a while now. Because they feel it, they know it, life is getting harder for them and their families. And they know who's responsible. They're smart. And as the Who sang, they're not going to be fooled again. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.